In this video, I'm going to show you how to install LVP flooring, and we're going to do it right now. If you've been following along my channel, first of all, thank you. And secondly, you will know that I have done a ton of work in this room. I basically gutted it and I've put it back together. And this is kind of a little sneak peek before the big time lapse comes out of the almost finished room. And now it's time to put the floor down. And I chose to go with LVP for a couple different reasons. First of all, LVP stands for Luxury Vinyl Plank. This is definitely vinyl plank. I don't know about how luxurious it is, but that is what they call it. And the main reason I went with it is because it is super durable. I learned the hard way that a hardwood floor and a crazy 100 pound dog don't mix. Also carpet, I actually like carpet, but carpet can get really dirty really quick and a little hard to clean. This is super easy to clean. And as a bonus, it's completely waterproof. It has a lifetime warranty as long as you install it the proper way. The brand name is Lifeproof and they have a ton of different color options and styles. I chose this one because, well, the wife chose this one, so this is the one we're putting in. And the other cool thing about it is it doesn't need an underlayment. It has its own built-in underlayment and the underlayment that is built into it is a sound mitigating underlayment. If it can offer some soundproofing between this floor and the basement, that'd be a great thing. And of course, another huge bonus is this stuff is super easy to install. And while it is very durable, it's also pretty flexible and it will hide a lot of imperfections in your floor. So that's why I'm going with this and I'm gonna show you how to do it but there are a couple things that I need to do as far as prep work for the floor before we start laying it down. So let's get into that. A couple things to note when you're prepping the floor, just make sure you don't have any staples or nails left over from say a carpet. You can't go directly over a carpet. They don't recommend that you install the stuff in an RV or a three season porch. And when they don't recommend stuff like that, that usually means that it voids the lifetime warranty. The same with if you put an underlayment here, it'll void the warranty because it has an underlayment built in. Obviously make sure you have holes filled in. Make sure that the floor is as flat as possible, that you don't have a point, say a quarter inch drop off that could eventually lead to a plank breaking because of the movement. This is a floating floor. So it is gonna move around. Don't put any cabinets on top of it because it needs to expand and contract with the weather changes and the humidity levels. All that stuff is something that you need to take into account when you're doing any type of floating floor. I don't have any issues. I took care of the filling in the floor on the framing stages of this room. But what I do have is little squeaky floor. So what I want to do is secure that because I don't want to put this floor all down and then I walk on it and I still have squeaks. So let's take care of that and then we can clean everything up and lay this floor. So lucky for me, I already know that there's a joist right here and right here because I put screws in underneath this floor to tighten this one up the same way. Once you find one joist, you should be able to measure off of that 16 inches because your joist should be 16 inches on center. So I can start with these two joists, measure off of there 16 inches and put screws in this entire floor. And I'm gonna use three inch screws. So there's gonna be about two inches of screw into the joists. So if I stand right here, there I go. That's a pretty good squeak. See if I can eliminate that. Let's see, stand in the same place. Perfect. I just gotta do that about 40 more times.
no more squeaky squeaky. So I went around and I took out all of the staples and anything, any obstructions that were gonna mess with me, mess with my floor. And I actually hammered down these screws because the floor kind of popped up as I did that. So I just hammered those down and I actually cut this floor back just because it was overlapping. So that was to eliminate this hump here. This is rolled vinyl. It's about a 16th of an inch thick and it is loose in some places and then there's glue in other places. And I feel like it's more trouble than it's worth to tear this out. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And I hope that this doesn't qualify as underlayment. So many rules. I swept everything up, all the dust, all the dirt, and now we can lay our first piece. This floor in the hallway is the exact same type of floor. It's a different color, but it is the same life proof stuff. And if I was to use the same exact color, I would just continue it right here. And this is actually just a temporary piece that I can pull out. And the reason I did that was to protect this right here from getting dust and debris and protect it from stepping on it and damaging it. So if I was gonna use the same color, I would just take this piece and start it right here and work my floor that way. But since it's a different color, I would rather not see the transition right here. Uh, I actually would like the transition to be right here, which would be right under the door. So that way you don't have a strip of a different kind of floor right here. Maybe that's a little nitpicky, but that's how I like it. So instead, I'm gonna start from this back wall and work my way this way. And then I'll just make my rip pieces right here and do a transition under the door. So this is an easy way to start, is along this wall. Of course, the heat right here doesn't make a perfect situation, but one thing you do wanna check is you wanna see how square your room is. And by that, I mean the difference between this wall to this wall, and then on the other side of the room, that wall to that wall. So I'm gonna check right here, put my tape down, about 111 and a quarter. And then on this side, I do the same thing. And that's about 111 and a half. So I'm out by a quarter of an inch, 111 and a quarter, 111 and a half. There needs to be gaps between the walls regardless because this is a floating floor so it needs to move around. You should have about a quarter inch gap. What I can do is have a bigger gap down there and a smaller gap right here. And then over here, it'll be nice and even. I could do that if this was a critical spot where you're gonna see how far off that is, but a quarter inch isn't a big deal. So I don't mind doing this, just quarter inch, quarter inch gap, and then dealing with these rips right here, because you'll never be able to tell. But that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing this floor. So our first piece, and I am going to install this so that the tongue is facing the wall. That just makes it way easier to put the tongue into the groove afterwards. So it'll go down just like this. And then the next piece will go like this and lock in. I have done it the other way where it'll be like this. Let's say you flip and you have to go into some closets or something. You can get the pieces in there, but it's more difficult. So I'm gonna start with a full piece down here. I have to notch around this pipe. There is gonna be a cover going here, but I wanted to put the floor under first. I didn't want it getting in the way. These shims are exactly a quarter inch right here. So that's what I'm gonna use for the walls. And I'm just gonna slide this up like that, hold it away from the wall even, put it tight to the pipe, and make my mark. So I'm gonna mark each side of this pipe. I'm gonna give myself about a quarter inch. And then I'm gonna measure to the wall here. Again, my floor is tight to the pipe. So I measure from the wall to the floor. That's inch and three quarters. So I am gonna mark right here, inch and three quarters. And because I need a quarter of an inch gap on the wall 
that's gonna bring it out this way a quarter of an inch, and that'll give me a gap in between the floor and the pipe. And that'll be plenty of room for when this expands and contracts and moves around. So now I can mark this like this, and that looks pretty good to me right here. There is gonna be a cover here anyways that'll hide that cut, so I'm not too worried about that. So we can take our piece and cut it. This stuff cuts really easy. The way I like to make cuts like this is with a jigsaw with a fine tooth blade and it cuts through it just like butter. Now we can put this piece in just to make sure it's gonna be good. That is gonna be perfect. But I am not gonna put it into place yet. I'm just gonna pull this out past the heat. Because the heat's there, I'm gonna put this entire row together first and then slide it back. So I'm gonna put my shim in here and we can move on to the next piece. Now another full piece. You can see that this is the groove and this is a tongue and the way you put these together is you set it right on top like this and what I want to do is make sure that this is even, lay it down and I use a regular hammer just so you know I own a rubber hammer but these you have to get together perfectly or you have issues. And it's hard to feel when this locks in with a rubber hammer. So you just are very carefully gonna tap right here until it locks into place. And one more time, because this is so important to get this right, don't put this too far over like this before you start hammering it. It's gotta be just like that. See that gap right there? You don't want it to be like that. You want it to be nice and even, not too tight. And then you can take your hammer and you can feel it pop right into place. And it should be nice and even like that. If you don't get this right, you're gonna have problems with the floor. So just take your time, make sure that these go in together properly. And there's a little pin right here rid of that. One more piece in here before we hit that heat pipe. Just made it. Let's see if I can take this out. Cool. Same thing. Line this up. Make sure it's nice and even. If you want to, like they say in the instructions, you can use a rubber hammer. But like I said, it's really hard to feel when it locks into place with a rubber hammer. It's kind of bouncy. Now right here, as you can see, I have this weird hole with a ball, whatever's going on there. The floor is a little messed up. If this was in the middle of the room, I would definitely patch this in, fill it in some way, put some floor filler over it but since it's in the corner where nobody's going to be walking i'm not worried about it at all so i'm just going to go right over it so when you're marking out this piece you can do it one of two ways you can measure where you hold the tape like this and then measure to this edge right here five and three quarters and you want to subtract a quarter inch because that's the gap you want right there. And you wanna make sure that you're measuring from the right spot. This is the tongue. So you would mark that right here, five and a half. Or you can take your piece, hold it up against the wall if you wanna do it the quick way and hold it a quarter inch away like this. If you have a shim, you can throw a shim in there. And then you can see that your mark is right at the edge right here. So we can square that and then cut it and we're gonna have to cut out for this pipe as well. I always cut this stuff with a chop saw 
just because it's easier, but I realized that a utility knife is much more accessible. It won't create as much dust. It's not as loud. So you can cut it with a utility knife. It's just a little trickier. You have to score it a bunch of times. So I'm just gonna hold my square here, score this, and I hold it right on the edge of this plywood and break it like that. And then you have to flip it and cut the back. That's a lot of work, but that's how you do it with a utility knife. I'll check that. Looks good with the gaps. I can install this piece. Okay, now I can slide this entire row back as one piece. Hopefully I can take out my shim there without this heat collapsing. Nice and easy. Put my piece back in, put shims in in the back. I like to put a couple in so that way when I'm hammering the pieces in front here. The floor doesn't kind of twist and, and get messed up. First row is in. One mistake that I see sometimes for this flooring is the pattern. You don't want to just go back to this side and put another full piece in. You want to stagger these seams and make sure they're at least eight inches apart from one another. So in a perfect world, you can take your cut piece from down that end and start it down here as the starter for your next row. This one is about six inches away from that seam. So I'm actually gonna cut this back probably about here. This will be my waist and maybe the next piece, I can use that cut piece down here but you at least want to be away eight inches seam to seam. And then the next piece you can, you can do a full piece. And then I, I don't like doing that because this would line up here with this one. Not that you're going to be able to see it that great, but I like to do a very random pattern where this next one might be here. Then the next one will be here and then the next seam will be here, and then here, and so on and so forth. So that's how I'm gonna do it. You can do it however you want, but just keep the seams staggered from row to row at least eight inches apart. So I'm a little too impatient to cut this stuff with a knife, so I'm gonna cut it with a jigsaw. Yeah, that's way easier. So this is all I wasted from that piece. You should have about 10% figured into your square footage for waste for pieces like this. Just FYI. Okay, next piece. Always working left to right. Put the tongue in the groove, just like this. Go in at an angle like this with this piece. Before you push it down, just make sure you're where you need to be right here. And then you can just kind of wiggle this down and into place. That's not completely locked in yet. I'm gonna put a shim back here because I am gonna hammer on this and I want this to stay where it is. I don't wanna mess up any other pieces. And this is an awesome tool to have. This is actually from the same brand, Life Proof. It locks in right here to your piece. Make sure it's set in that groove right there. And take a hammer. Just give it a little tap and you'll see this gap disappear. Just like that. Again, you can use a rubber hammer if you want. I just don't like doing it. Now the next piece is 
pretty much the same. The only difference is you have a combination of locking into this groove and at the same time locking into this one. So I like to put the piece in at an angle like this and then slide it over where it is nice and tight to this piece and wiggle it into place. Lock it in this way first. See these bouncing? Put another piece right here. And then you can lock this piece in right here. And then if you have to, make sure there's a shim down there and you can tap this end carefully that way. Good. And from this point on until you get to the other side of the room, it's pretty simple. Same thing over and over again. Just make sure you stagger your seams, make sure these grooves are cleaned out, there's no stuff in them before you put the pieces in, lock it in, and move along. I'm just gonna emphasize one more time that this right here is really important to get correctly. So the more rows you get down, the easier it is to make sure all this stuff is nice and tight and it's one cohesive unit. But right now, this row can move around a lot. So you just wanna make sure there's no gaps in here anywhere. And what you can do is put a piece right here. You can probably not even see that there's a little bit of a gap right here. But I can take a pry bar like this against the wall and just pry it slightly, put my knee on this row, make sure that this is in the right place, and tap it. And that will lock everything together. And again, you can hit it end for end. Just make sure, keep an eye on all these seams as you go. Sometimes you can wiggle those right in and they pretty much go into place. Now, if you need to tap this this way, obviously you can't get a hammer in here. What they have in that same kit that you can get this in is this handy little tool basically hooks on to the piece and then you hammer this in. I don't like to use this unless I have to uh, because this gap starts changing when you do that. That piece popped up a little bit, gotta keep an eye out. So alternatively, what I like to do is make sure I'm on these pieces to, so hopefully they don't go anywhere, put a little pressure like this, and then take my hammer and just tap like this. And with a little bit of pressure right here, you'll see this seam just pop into place. Seam, seam, seam. So now I'm gonna do a full piece right here. So now you just keep doing that. You can build up a pyramid like this. You can go row by row, whatever works for you. Uh, I'm gonna put on some headphones and just work until we get to that wall and I'll show you what to do over there.
Okay, we're almost done. Now we just gotta figure out how to do this right here. So we're still starting over here, going from left to right. The first thing I'm gonna do is take care of the floor in the hallway. I'll fill in that piece. As I said, I want a transition piece right in the middle of this door right here. So I'm gonna take up my temporary piece that I put in, take that out. And what I wanna do is when I put this piece in, what I could do is just butt the flooring like this or try and notch it around this trim, but that won't look great. I want it to look more something like this where I can slide it right under. I already held this up that amount that I need. Now I just need to do that on this side. So I'm gonna do something called undercutting. And for that, I'm gonna use my favorite tool in the world. I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of flooring and put it right here and run this saw over the top of it and make my cut. good and then I'm gonna make a mark centered under this door and that is just about where I want my floor to be again I'm gonna leave a gap here in between the two pieces of flooring I'm gonna make that same mark on the other side now here's the tricky thing about this because of the trim or the door jam if I try and put this piece in and slide it under here and somehow bend it, I could definitely bend a piece and slide it under here, but then to get these two together is going to be nearly impossible. If you just lay this flat and then try and hammer this together, you could end up breaking either the tongue or the groove. This really needs to go in at a slight angle even just like that. So let me show you what I'm gonna do to make this work. So now I have two pieces that will go underneath the jam. I'm gonna put this one in first. Again, you gotta hold it up at an angle. I'm gonna hold it tight to the jam as far as I can go. And then I'm gonna tap it under the jam. Real light taps. Now I can tuck this piece in like this and get it locked in here. And now all I need to do is get it under here. So now that these pieces are connected, I can take a screwdriver and hopefully pry it right here. Might take some effort. A little bit more. Under the jam there, under the jam there. Now we can do this piece a similar way. I have my pieces. I'm gonna put this one in first. And just like that. I held that tight to the jam, and now I'm gonna push it this way as far as I can and I'm actually going to use this that's safer to use right here because this will go at an angle and could potentially mess up this right here so I'm going to hold it right here and that is tight to the wall this is a perfect gap right here so hopefully this piece works out the way I'm hoping it will. This is gonna go in right here. That's tight right there. 
very tight against the drywall. It's actually good. And then there's a gap on the drywall here for that quarter inch that I need. Make sure that's locked in there. pry bar in over here Try and get it to move a little bit without moving this let's lock this in so this piece and this piece are completely locked in and now I just want to scooch this over a little bit so it's underneath the jam here so let me see if I can stand on this and pry this at the same time there we go that's all I needed. Now, obviously I don't have trim here and that makes it easier for me. If you were doing this in a room where you have trim here, you had two doorways to go in like this, you might have to take this piece of trim off and just hold it tight to the face of the jam. You can try and slide the piece underneath first and maybe cut it a little higher up if that's what you have to do and just lift it up just high enough to try and get it to interlock right here. But it is difficult and you have to hammer it pretty hard. So try to be careful and not damage this tongue or groove right here. It's looking good. And then the rest is just notches and rips. And once you get up against a wall like this, just use a pry bar, put a little pressure on it, and give it a little tappy tappy. Now this is a good situation for this tool. Too small to get a hammer in and too big to put a pry bar in. Let's put some blocks there. Done that before too. All right, let's clean it up. I think this came out awesome. All I have left to do is put that heat cover on, window trim, closet trim, baseboard, Put a little metal threshold piece right here. And this room is done. Well, I gotta say, I love the look of this floor. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know how I did too. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. I'm sure there's other ways that I could have installed this floor, but I hope the video helps you out if you're going to install some LVP flooring. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can click hereish and hereish and check those videos out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Even though it doesn't look it, it's a nice old floor that we're gonna cover right up. Shut up, Matt. Did I mess up? Oh, you idiot. I gotta redo that. I gotta redo that whole thing.